Well, that's Tony Boucher representing the 26th District. That means Bethel, New Canaan, Redding, Richfield, West, and Westport, and Wilson. Joining us on this edition of Table Vision Speaker Leaders. And our guest on this program is Republican Senator elect Tony Boucher. It is good to have you with us. And a new hat for you, Tony. It is, indeed. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. We've had uh, some wonderful response, and I do have to thank uh, the voters of the district, including those that uh, cross the political aisle uh, to, to vote for us. And, uh, I'm very grateful to them and hope to maintain their trust and hope to serve them well. Well, given the, uh, the reality of this election, that is high praise and beauty for uh, the work that you've obviously done. And obviously, running around all these other towns, they have seven towns, is a lot. It is. It really is. It really is. And the good news is that at least I know the process well up in Hartford. So it's doable uh, to go to each town and to learn more about the individual issues for each different town. It is a beautiful district, by the way, as well. Well, you've got it all. You've got coast, you've got inland, you've got forest, you've got a little bit of everything. We have reservoirs and beautiful state parks. We also have beautiful uh, communities, the regional communities, the local communities, Westport, uh, Redding, and uh, there's so many new communities. They are you know, when you start naming it because you can run into trouble. <laughs> That's true. I bet. And then we'll just stick with uh, District 26. Well, speaking of, uh, of uh, the realities of situations and... and uh, so forth coming up in January, going to be back in action. Actually, the 24th, we've got a special yes. session coming up. Uh, the economy is really taking its toll on everybody nationally, uh, internationally, and certainly right here at home in the state. Absolutely. The news coming out of Hartford from uh, the governor has been nothing good when it comes to budgets and, and uh, deficit spending. You're absolutely right. It hits home to us. I get calls every day of individuals losing their job when the Hartford. Uh, you know, drops a 500 jobs, it affects people right here in our own hometown. So there's no question that is the number one issue that we must deal with. There's no question. We actually, I actually been on the appropriations committee, the continuous committee meets constantly. We were meeting just this week on Tuesday to receive the report both from the Office of, of, of uh, Fiscal Analysis, which is a nonpartisan fiscal office, as well as the Office of Policy and Management, which deals with the budget. They, they laid out exactly where we are at the moment, what they foresee going into the future. Uh, one was a little bit more pessimistic than the other. And um, one of the questions that uh, I brought out was just how much of this budget is reflective of the fact that Connecticut is probably going to be a, um, affected more so than other states because of its dependence on the finance industry, on Wall Street, on the stock market. A lot of the individuals that, that live and work in our area um, work in that field. And as a result, when they lose a job, uh, when our um, the capital gains and dividend um, returns are much, much less than they have in the past, it immediately is reflected in the revenues of, of the state. And as a result, uh, we've seen a very dramatic drop. We actually started out in pretty good shape, better than most states. So that's what a lot of people would, would question as they sitting at home saying, now, how, how old have we been so far off? Because at the beginning of the year, we had a surplus. Absolutely. And well, things looked pretty rosy at that point. They did. And then it rapidly fell apart, becoming a deficit. The governor kind of patched it together there for a moment. All of a sudden, the floor fell out of everything. Right? Absolutely. It did. And, and that is because most state government revenues are um, that come due on, say, April the 15th. It is reflective of not that year's income, but the year before. So, in other words, on April 15th, we were dependent on the 2007 income stream. So it didn't look so bad. Exactly, exactly. And now we are, you know, in, in um, April 15th of 2009, it will reflect the 2008 economy, which has changed dramatically. It's happened everywhere, but in Connecticut, as I said, even more so, simply because we're not as diversified as an economy. We used to be more manufacturing, defense, but now we are very dependent on the financial services industry. And because of that, it was 
we took a very hard hit. And um, we were, as I said, in good shape compared to a major state. And we also have some money in the rainy day fund. But by the way, that was required for us to have that in there. Both from a bonding standpoint, from a rating standpoint, from a security standpoint for the patients that are coming due uh, every time someone retires on the state or a teacher pension as well. So, you know, that's not money that's just readily available as some people might think. And even if it were, say we would use all of that. Now that we're looking at double what we originally anticipated in deficits, that would be a drop in the bucket really going forward. So we have to look at some serious changes in, in our budget. Well, now what kind of a demand can there be on that rainy day fund? We're talking $6 billion or more. At this point, over the next two years. Two three years. Yeah. Right. Now, what about that rainy day fund? Is that going to be hit for a portion of that? Or it, is it going it to stand be. alone? And, and well, it could be, but it could be definitely used a portion of it can be used. However, it shouldn't be the first thing we look at. If we do that, remember, we're keeping uh, intrinsically higher costs in place. So what we're doing is we're assuring bigger deficits in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and the prospect is that someone might propose a tax increase, which in my book, and certainly governor as well, is, is not acceptable right now, not in the sense that people can even, um, uh, you know, um, tolerate any more costs than they already have, because the reason job the higher cost is there already. Um, so we do have to look at changing the cost structure now in order to reduce those future deficits. And there's been a lot of interesting proposals being made. Uh, in fact, the governor has a website now where uh, she's invited the public to propose changes. And it's been interesting. I've been following that and looking at some of those items. Have people gotten actively involved? In yes, they have. It's, it's, been, it's been interesting. Some of them uh, uh, may not be politically uh, possible. They, you know, suggested that we bring back polls. Uh, but other items, like uh, let's privatize uh, some of the state services. Uh, some of the others are... Have they suggested specific... Yeah, yeah. Like One of them was, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, transit district. Others have proposed that we sell beer and wine on Sunday and then tax it more. Uh, but some of the more serious uh, suggestions, uh, which have been proposed in the past, was assess all of state properties that are owned and possibly sell off those that are not needed right now. Uh, how about the state employees taking a greater percentage uh, or paying a greater percentage of the health care um, programs that they have, which are much, much higher and richer than most uh, anyone else probably has? That might be a reasonable place to go. Some have um, talked about maybe eliminating a pay increase for one year temporarily until we get through these bad times because there are some very high costs built into that have been negotiated in the past that have put in 5 and 6 percent increases in wages. Those are some of the big ticket items that aren't being proposed right now, but we may have to look at in the future. And those, of course, are, are subject to contact. So they are. You they have, have to deal with the, the unions themselves Absolutely. and get some concessions from them. Absolutely. But in light of the possibility of, of layoffs, Right, and that, Maybe that looks more effective. Well, we hope so. And having been there for a previous few sessions, there was a bargaining unit that did come forward. A Yukon um, uh, employees came forward and offered up a freeze on their salary for a year to save jobs. But I think a lot of that will be something we will have to look at probably after the first year. Now, as you mentioned, we are going to deal with this issue immediately, and that is Monday, the Monday before Thanksgiving, we have a special session. Uh, the governor has called a special session because he's done everything he can legally to hold back and why we are in as good a position as we are right now. He did all of the restrictions that he could make, uh, 5 percent across the board, and further restrictions. He's put in a, a hiring freeze. He put in a travel ban. But going beyond that, it is the legislature that has to decide. A lot of folks think, oh, the president, you know, can set the agenda or the governor of the state can set the agenda. In fact, that's not true. The executive branch can suggest they can offer up a plan, but the final decision always resides with the legislature or Congress, and that's the House and Senate together. We have to look for the leadership, which one party has dominated that in Connecticut for 30 out of the last 34 years, so they would have to come along and agree to that. And, you know, uh, even when the minority party has proposed something, we did that in 2007, oftentimes that alternative uh, becomes very attractive, and the majority party will sign on. And we hope that that working together um, uh, point of view attitude will, will certainly be present now that we're, we're undergoing some such constraints. So I 
like I said, it's up to the legislature now. That's why I just called a special session to propose uh, some um, very good ideas that are not draconian yet. There are things that are doable that will not affect employment, will not affect 